I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from around the country. In a 55 to 43 vote, the Senate confirmed Amy Coney Barrett, a Notre Dame law professor, to a lifetime appointment as a federal judge on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit. At her nomination hearings in September, Barrett, who is Catholic, was grilled about the impact her faith would have on her interpretation of the law. After Barrett's hearing, several Catholic leaders, including Archbishop William Laurie, chairman of the USCCB's ad hoc committee on religious liberty, spoke out against the line of questioning news on her that focused on her faith. Archbishop Laurie described the hearing as de deeply disappointing, saying some senators challenged her fitness to serve due to her Catholic faith. President Donald Trump nominated her in May to fill a vacant seat on the Seventh Circuit, a jurisdiction that covers Indiana, Illinois, and Wisconsin. The court is based in Chicago. Chicago. In news from Italy, on the Feast of All Souls, Pope Francis visited the World War II Sicily Rome American Cemetery and Memorial to celebrate an outdoor Mass. Before the Mass, the Pope placed a white rose atop ten white marble headstones. Pope Francis commemorated All Souls Day by visiting the Sicily Rome American Cemetery amongst the remains of 7,861 fallen World War II soldiers and Red Cross nurses who were buried there. He prayed for all the deceased victims of war, especially those who lost their lives during the liberation of Sicily and Battle of Anzio between 1943 and 1944. Pope Francis reflected on hope amidst times of suffering and loss. Ma la speranza tante volte nasce e mette le sue radici in tante piaghe umane, in tanti dolori umani. E quel momento di dolore, di piaga, di sofferenza, ci fa guardare il cielo e dire io credo che il mio Redentore è vivo, ma fermati, Signore. E quella è la preghiera che forse esce di tutti noi quando guardiamo questo cimitero. The Pope said many times in history, men think that war will solve problems, but instead it ends in hell and only causes more pain and loss. After the Mass, the Pope traveled to another cemetery, Fossi Ardiatini, which is a memorial for 335 people who were murdered by the Nazi occupiers in 1944. The Pope was led through the long series of tunnels at the memorial and stopped to pray several minutes in silence. In news now from around the country, a consultant to the USCCB's Committee on the Doctrine has resigned his position after publishing a letter to Pope Francis questioning his teachings. Father Thomas Wynandy, a Capuchin priest and former executive director of the U.S. Bishop's Secretariat of Doctrine and Canonical Affairs, said in his letter that he still expresses loyalty to the Pope, but that chronic confusion seems to mark his pontificate. Father Wynandy outlines five areas of concern where he said confusion may result among the faithful. The concerns include the Pope's manner of teaching on Amoris Laetitiae, calling the Pope's guidance ambiguous. He also says the Pope often seems to demean the importance of doctrine, and he questions the Pope's appointments of some bishops who, he says, seem to support and defend views counter to Christian belief. In a statement, the president of the USCCB, Cardinal uh, Daniel DiNardo, said this incident is an opportunity to reflect on dialogue within the church, saying that Christian charity needs to be exercised by all involved. The cardinal quoted St. Ignatius, who wrote, It should be presumed that every good Christian ought to be more eager to put a good interpretation on a neighbor's statement than to condemn it. Cardinal Donato said this presupposition should be afforded all the more to the teaching of our Holy Father. In news from the Vatican, after praying the Angelus with pilgrims in St. Peter's Square November 1st, the Pope said he was deeply saddened by the attack in New York that left at least eight people dead and 11 others injured when pedestrians and bicyclists were mowed down by a driver in a pickup truck. The Pope also prayed for victims of recent terrorist attacks in Somalia, where Al-Shabaab militants stormed a hotel and killed 23 people, and in Afghanistan, when an Islamic State suicide bomber killed 13 people near the U.S. Embassy in Kabul. Rome report says more on the Pope's address from the Vatican. Pope Francis prayed for the victims of the attacks in Somalia, Afghanistan, and New York, and also called for the conversion of terrorists. 
Nel deplorare tali atti di violenza, prego per i defunti, per i feriti e i loro familiari. Chiediamo al Signore che converta i cuori dai terroristi e liberi il mondo dall'odio e dalla follia omicida che abusa del nome di Dio per disseminare morte. As it was All Saints Day, he pointed out that there are many people who are not officially named saints, but still do good works on earth. Oggi è una festa di famiglia, di tante persone semplici, nascoste, che in realtà aiutano Dio a mandare avanti il mondo. E ce ne sono tanti oggi, ce ne sono tanti. He also added that saints are not perfect models, but people who've let God act through their lives. And finally in the news, a mass was held recently in South Dakota to formally open the sainthood cause for Native American Nicholas Black Elk, who has been described as someone who merged the Lakota and Catholic culture in a way that drew him deeper into the mystery of Christ's love in the church. In his homily at the mass at Holy Rosary Church in Pine Ridge, Bishop Robert Gruz of Rapid City said Black Elk's life as a dedicated catechist, spiritual leader and guide inspired many to live for Christ by his own story. With the formal opening of his cause, Black Elk now has the title Servant of God. Well, that's all the information we have for you at this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.